right. Well, welcome to Mission Possible Part 2. Um, as you can see, I am in nature today, mainly because, um, well, I'm here. I'm in Colorado, and I want to share with you some of the colors that I have been inspired by um, in nature. So this is Mission Possible Part 2. If you're interested in seeing the first video, you can um, access that at bit.ly forward slash Mission Possible Part 1, all lowercase letters, and it'll take you to YouTube, and that's the very first video. It has a lot of great tips on how to mix the colors, the three colors that were in the hands-on, the Cherry Lola, the Odd Fashioned, and the Klecks on the Beach. You can find that on, in this hands-on flyer that also comes with a gorgeous fill me up with love bag. So if you find that you have extra markers that are out of ink, you can throw them in your bag when you're on the job and then that'll remind you to fill them up later. So if you don't have this hands-on flyer, you can go to Neuland's website and um, request it. And there's also a really great kit um, available. Let's see if I can find that. Here we go. It's the big, the refill big pack. And I go over this big pack in the very first video. And um, it's got everything you need to make some refills. I do make some suggestions that if you do purchase this and you think you're going to love um, mixing color, then I also suggest that you get a couple of other things and that is plenty of empty markers and empty bottles. And so if you can get empty refill, bottles and um, the empty markers and all different kinds of sizes or whatever sizes you enjoy best, I suggest that you get one of those. Also, if you don't already have one, and this is the cheapy version, it's the cardboard version of the refill box that is great for refilling markers. And they also have a metal version that's gorgeous. So um, that's definitely what you'll want to get um, in addition to the refill pack. Some other things that you will want to have on hand, whether it's today and you're mixing with me or if you want to watch this video later, you're going to want to make sure that you have plenty of tissues or paper towels. Um, you'll want to use either Q-tips, which I'll be using Q-tips today just because it's a little bit faster to work with, or you can use brushes if you don't want to waste um, any Q-tips. You want to have plenty of fresh, clean water on hand, and you can just use... Um, some reusable old containers as long as they're clean and a place for wastewater and that's just so that you don't have to be jumping up and down to get to the sink. Now if you have any extra of these refill bulbs these are excellent to use um, for when we're testing and I'll show you how I use them today. So I always have a couple of extra of these yellow mainly because whenever I get really low um, on say a yellow I'll fill it up with I'll fill it fill my big, my fat, excuse me, I'll fill my fat one up uh, with any extra ink. And I especially like to use yellow because you can make great big titles with it and then go over it with other colors. So whenever you see me um, testing, if you see me using these yellows, my 500 uh, brilliant yellow is my favorite. So you want to have a few of these on hand and get some little containers. Um, I suggest either clear or white. You can pick up things like this at the thrift store um, or anything like that. So this is gonna be really great for mixing colors. And today I'm going to reveal this secret ingredient. So quick intro for those of you who are just tuning in. My name is Heather Martinez. I am a visual practitioner, lettering artist, visioneer, and Neuland ambassador. And when Neuland came out, with this um, refill set and sent out the hands-on flyer, I got really excited about color. And at the time I was spending a month in Paonia, Colorado where I did an artisan residency. And there I was inspired by the, um, the deserts and the mountain and the food there. And the food was Olathe corn, uh, and that's grown in Olathe, Colorado. Uh, Palisade peach, which are peaches grown in Palisade, Colorado, and then the desert sage, which is a beautiful green color, and then alpine lavender. And I was really intrigued that um, I don't notice any muted colors in Neuland's color palette. And so I wanted to figure out how can I make muted colors. So that's really what today is about. I am going to share with you um, four colors to those four colors today and I'm giving you my recipes and I'm though I do most of the mixing in the part one um, I'm going to do a little bit of mixing today but at a very small uh, 
level so that you can see and we can go quickly. So let's see, we've covered what we need in our mixing station. I like to have a white background. In fact, I'm gonna bring another piece of paper forward. And I'm just using extra, um, extra pieces of paper from um, the learning, the lettering learning pad. Okay, so let's go over uh, some tips and tricks that I have for mixing color. And the reason why I want to cover this right now is because I cover a lot of the mixing in the very first video. I cover the, just the how-tos. If you haven't seen it, no big deal. You can go online and see that at Bitly Mission Possible Part 1. But what I'm doing now is just opening up the three colors so that you can see these. And I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of these colors. And I love using um, the Q-tips because it's, it's just a really easy way and it's a clean way to use them. So the three colors that we're gonna be working with are 501. And 501 is a beautiful yellow color. These are our primary colors that we're gonna be working with. Um, it's the most used ink and it's because it's the lightest. And we definitely wanna start with the lightest color when we're mixing. It helps so that we don't de uh, contaminate any, any of our other colors and we don't wanna waste any ink. And then the second color that we're working with is a neon pink color. It's 704. And like most red, um, whether, you use, whether you're uh, putting like tomato sauce or something in a container, reds tend to stain. So just keep that in mind that if you're um, using containers like these little clear containers or white containers that you clean it out quickly. Um, otherwise they can stain um, and can not seriously stain your clothes because these are all water soluble, um, but it, it can stain if you don't wash it off quickly. So, and then the last color, which is our turquoise, our blue, is 301. And what I have found, and this isn't anything wrong with Noyland, this is just true for water-based inks, <clears throat> is that blues tend to fade the fastest. So keep that in mind when you're um, mixing color or using colors. Um, one time I, I did a large graphic recording and I used a lot of purple, which blue is in purple, and um, I had it out in the sunlight and it ended up fading. And so sometimes um, those, the blue colors can fade. So again, what we wanna do is start <clears throat> with the lightest color when we're mixing and go to the darker colors. A few more tips, <clears throat> pardon me. I need to just grab one of my notes here. There we go. So when you're using when you're starting to mix color, you'll want to be sure to conserve as much as you can. So if you can conserve your ink while mixing, then you'll have more ink to play with later on. And the best way to conserve ink while testing is first start with drops. And we're gonna literally count drops today and then you can convert those into refill, into how many refill bulbs you do. If you start with the refill bulbs pretty soon, if you don't know color theory, you might end up with a lot of mud or a lot of color that you don't like. Another thing you'll wanna, wanna figure out is how many drops are in a refill bulb. Well, that all depends on you. And that is the size of your fingers, it could be your hand position, and it could be the tightness that you have on your squeeze. I've counted anywhere from 250 to 500 drops, just playing with how do I hold um, the actual dropper when I'm working. So you wanna be careful not to ever squeeze your dropper when it's not in the bottle, but how you're holding the bottle, how much ink is in the bottle. If you don't have a whole lot of ink left, you're not gonna get a lot of fill. But what I have found um, in Neuland's, in their um, hands-on recipes that they've given us, the Odd Fashion, the Cherry Lola, and the Clex on the Beach, is that they give us the amounts in refill dropper fulls. And this totally works. You'll see in my video that these colors come out beautifully. The secret is, is just make sure that when you squeeze this bulb, that you squeeze it consistently. And then another thing to note, I just wanna make sure that I don't have any drastic spills here. We don't need a hazmat situation. 
Another thing that I like to note and that I've just learned recently, especially working with muted colors, is that according to your water content, depending on your water content and the environment and the atmosphere that you're working in, your colors can shift. And so because every single color has a different weight to it, right? So yellow is probably the lightest, literally, and blue is probably the darkest. The pigments that are in there actually have a weight as well. And so how they're suspended in water and the amount of water that you have can shift your colors. I've seen some grays, some light blues, and some light purples shift slightly um, in, the, in the process of um, not just mixing, but when I travel. So when I live in Colorado, it's very dry here. Um, I lose a lot of water content in my markers. And when I was living in DC, um, it was very humid there. And so I didn't have to refill my markers as much. And um, my pigments were really, really rich. And so those are just a few tips and tricks. Want to remind you that over the next coming days, weeks, um, you can look for links to both of these videos online. And I'm going to be putting together a PDF download with these types of studio notes in it. So you're welcome to take notes while, um, while we talk here today. But I'm also going to be making this available so that you can download it and um, have it available as well. I'll also be showing examples of how I'm using these colors. Um, this color that I used here to write with the art marker was actually the Palisade Peach. So why don't we go ahead and get to that. Let me share... Um, what you've all been waiting for in terms of our colors here. So just want to use a little bit of color here so you can see. I've broken this down into our ingredients, which the first two colors, I call them deliciously juicy. And they are the Olathe corn and Palisade peach. And if you've had either one of these foods, they are excellent. So really simple. Um, this is my graph for all of my colors and what it takes to create them. For the Olathe corn, that's this color, you're actually going to use six dropper fulls, um, I'm sorry, refill bulb fulls of the 501, that's this color, and you're going to use 30 drops. Now you're actually going to literally have to count these out. Now, but that's what makes it so unique. If every single color were an entire dropper full, we wouldn't have very many colors to choose from. It's these little subtle things that we do um, to create our unique colors. So the Olathe corn, I've put that in a uh, number one wedge tip. And um, you can see that in the first video, uh, actually the first video I cover the other colors, but you can see how to load in these. Also remember that when you have a new marker, you're actually gonna put a little bit more ink in it than you would if you were refilling a marker that's already been used. And so a number one, you're gonna use two, maybe two and a half um, refill bulbs, and it squeezes, not full, but re uh, refill bulb squeezes. Whereas if you're just refilling a new one, you're just going to use one squeeze, okay? And then the Palisade Peach, which here I've put, um, this is also, that's also a uh, number one wedge. You're going to use four of the 501, four um, refill bulb squeezes, and one of the 704. And you're going to use one of just clear water. So whenever I do clear water, I take my um, refill bulb and I squeeze it as much as I can or as much as I squeezed all the other ones. And I put it down into the water. I put almost the whole cap or half of the cap into the water so that I make sure that not just the injection needle there is in the water, but the whole thing, just to make sure. As you can see there, that's, that's literally a half of a, a refill bulb full. And so by doing that, that, as long as I'm consistent with my other squeezes, then it'll be the same. I haven't found it to be different um, just working out of a bottle or working out of a tank like this. Now, if you want, you can create just a refill um, you could fill one of these just with water, just so that you have them, so that you can be consistent. All right, let's go ahead and talk about our new friends, Desert Sage and Alpine Lavender. 
I created these because I was so interested in what's possible in terms of making muted colors. And so for those of you who really know color theory, this is not going to become a surprise. But for those of you who don't, may want to know what the secret ingredient is. And the secret ingredient for today to make muted colors is, and it's a New Orleans product, ta-da, it's one of the grays. And so what I did is I tested these colors first using 108. It's the gray 108. Now, this is part of the gray s'mores series. You've got from 108 to 104. There's five colors and five shades. And so <clears throat> I, I tested all of these colors with 108 and they looked a little light. They were almost a pastel color. We know that muted colors come out of grays. And so I went back and I retested all of the colors again a few days later in 106. And just like in photography, if you want to find that right exposure, you underexpose so that you can see the details in the highlights and then you, or the details in the shadows, and then you overexpose so you can see the details in the highlights. Well, I did this, I took the same concept and I applied it to mixing color and knowing that muted colors um, are really great, rich muted colors come from grays which is a muted tone. So I did the 108 first, it looked too pastel because there's more water content in that gray. And then I went with the 106, which has more of the um, color in it. And sorry, there we go, thank you for muting. And so then I did it again with the um, 106 and it was a little too dark. So I found that for me and these specific colors, which may change um, later on, um, I used 107. And so that 107 um, was a really good color for me to use. Now, when I did the 108, it was dark and it was beautiful, but I was still going for a little bit lighter, try to get as light as I can without it being a pastel color. So do we understand a little bit about pastels? Did anybody have any questions in terms of muted versus pastels? I'll do a quick, we'll talk a little bit about color here. Um, and I'm sorry I don't have a, a more dignified color wheel in terms of having more detail in it. But what we know about color, <clears throat> and of course we have the primary colors here, yellow, blue, and red, essentially. Um, and these are the colors that, these are the secondary and the tertiary colors that these colors make. But if we wanted to make a shade, which is a darker version of each one of these, we would add black. Or in, in our case, if we want to make it muted, we'd make it gray. But if we added white, which we don't have white as a pigment in water-based colors, um, we actually just use water, so we're lightening it, it would make what's called a tint. Or in our case, when we start writing with it, a, um, a pastel. And so just keep in mind that um, if you use black, you're going to get a shade. But if you use gray, you're going to get muted. And if you use water, you're going to get what's called a tint or it'll be more pastel. So thank you for those of you that are just joining in. Um, we're going to have a recording of this video up after um, probably in a couple of days. But I want to show you how did I mix my desert sage and my alpine lavender. And you're going to notice here that before I talked a little bit about um, using drops first and then... Um, translating that into refill bulbs. Just a quick note, this is a great thing to remember, is that you're gonna want at least five refill bulbs or five squeezes in order to um, mix the color correctly and get your first marker injected. Plus you want a little bit of extra left over so you can keep refilling it. So I'm gonna have to do the math later, um, but I'm still, I I've still been playing with my um, with my recipe here. So I'm gonna show you how I'm making my desert sage. Starting out with, let's just put this away aside for a sec. I'm gonna use the 501, a little bit of water, the 301, and our secret ingredient here. So real quick, we're gonna do six drops. And notice that I always start with the lightest color first. I am going to go in this order right now because we're not contaminating another refill um, container 
in the first video, you'll see that whenever I have a refill container um, and I'm putting it, I'm putting the actual squeezes inside the refill container, I'm making sure that I don't contaminate color. That's another reason why we start from light to dark. Um, but in this case, because we're putting it in this little dish, I'm not too worried about it. I'm only doing one drop of the 301. We want to make sure we have some water. So I'm going to grab some water here. We're just doing two drops of those. Okay. And then for the secret ingredient, and I kind of want to stir my gray a little bit. Again, uh, that pigment that's in the gray is a little bit heavier than water, I think. And so I always just kind of swirl it. I don't shake it. I don't want to add any um, extra air, but I'm going to do nine drops. So it's out of these grays that muted colors come, right? So mm -hmm. I'm just going to quickly stir this just kind of shake it in the bowl. And you'll notice that it's a green color. Don't always rely on what you're seeing in the dish when you're mixing color because it's gonna look much different when it's on paper. It's also gonna look really different depending on how um, concentrated you have it. So I'm gonna let most of the ink ride down here and I'm just gonna, because I don't wanna oversaturate my Q-tip, and I'm just going to um, get a little bit that's kind of hanging out at the top so that you can see what it looks like when it's really, really light. And so that's a nice desert sage color. And now I'm gonna really put a lot of ink down here and you'll see it gets a little bit darker like yeah. that, okay? Excellent. All right, so that's the desert sage. That's how easy it is. And again, once I go to fill up my marker, I'm gonna want to figure out, okay, I don't think I wanna do six um, refill droppers one, two, and nine, because nine would be a lot of refill droppers. But I'll do the math, I'll figure out, I'll convert it. But this is a great way to test those colors. So let's move on to Alpine Lavender, unless anybody has any questions. I like to get my inks kind of sorted out because um, for some reason I'm not really great. I might mix up my color, I might mis miscount how many I do, and you'll see in my first video that when I do the refill droppers, um, I actually write down a little, a little chicken scratch every single time or make some kind of a mark to help keep count because I can easily miscount. And it would, it would be horrible to um, create a recipe incorrectly and then share the recipe wrong and people thinking, what, how did you do that? I, I didn't get the same effect. So here we're gonna do eight drops of the 704 neon pink. Four of this 301 turquoise. Oops, that was five. We're going to see what happens here. <laughs> that happens. Ten of the secret ingredient, uh, 107. Oops, no, I have that wrong. It's 20. Ten of the water. Glad I caught myself. Ten of the water. There you go. And 20 of the secret ingredient. All right, notice that's a lot of gray. Again, if I were using a lighter gray, it wouldn't be as a dark of a muted color. If I were using a darker gray, even if it were closer to black, um, you probably wouldn't see a lot of this color come out. But the 107 is, is a color that's really been working for me for this particular project. So again, I'm just gonna take a little bit of the color here onto the Q-tip so that we can see what does it look when it's lighter. There's that Alpine Lavender. And notice it's not, uh, it's not blue, it's not purple necessarily, but it's, it's a nice color that's coming out of that, um, out of that gray. And this is what it would look like slightly darker. And so just that little bit of shift um, could even happen in your marker too, and depending on how juicy it is, right? So this is the number one rounded nib. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some, some of that ink in there. I'm just gonna pull it right from here. 
And again, you don't want to squeeze the bulb between the time that you pull your ink out and um, put it in the back of your marker. But once you get it in there, just lightly, you can, what's great about these empties is you can actually see the ink falling from the injection needle. And I don't know if I can show that, if it'll show, yeah, a little bit. Um, so I go slowly and notice that I put a little too much in it because it was already full and so it's already coming out the other end. If you find that when you're on the job, you want to um, add some ink, but you want it to go through really quickly, sometimes you can just add a little bit by dropping it directly onto the nib. In this case, we don't really need to because there's already so much ink in there. So I can soak a little bit of it up. Um, here we go. And so this is what it looks like coming out of the marker. And because it's, it, it does have a lot in there, but because it's going through this membrane, um, it is going to be a little bit lighter. So there we have it. Easy peasy, right? So using the three uh, primary colors and our secret ingredient that you were all looking for, these are my recipes for the deliciously juicy and the beautifully muted. How do I plan my color? Okay, so I'm looking in the chat win window, but you're welcome to also unmute yourself. How do you plan your colors or is it just random? No, I absolutely plan my colors. In this case, these four colors came from being inspired by my environment. Um, I was trying to think about how I wanted that to look. I was also thinking about what would make a nice color palette in terms of having a bright color. I also wanted to make sure that there was an orange, a green, and a purple. So I was using all of the primary colors as I was mixing. So for this particular, um, for this particular thing, I think that for this particular project, I think that these colors, I wanted to be able to show them all and that, that these actually do that. I also wanted a little bit of a theme. Um, I don't know that I would necessarily graphic record in all of these colors because they're all sort of light. I like to be able to have um, a dark, maybe a couple of mid-tones and a light color. And so um, <clears throat> I think if I were deciding my own color palette for a specific um, recording, I would consider those. All right, any other questions? Thank you, Lori. I'm glad these are clear. And I will make all of these recipes um, available to the public. And um, I will do more. I will translate these drops into refill bulbfuls. So I'm working on the math on that. I just want to make sure that these muted colors, they tend, like I said before, because there's a lot of water content in them through the gray, uh, they tend to shift a little bit. So be gentle with yourself when you're mixing colors. Remember though, that if you mix a color that has all three of these, you're going to get end up getting some version of brown. I know that sounds weird, but all three of these colors are gonna make essentially mud. So if you notice here, um, on any one of my colors, if you look at just this part, there's two colors used in each one, but there's not a third. And so if you don't wanna make your colors muddy, don't use all three to make one specific color. So keep that in mind. Also notice that these two colors, the Olathe corn and the Palisade peach are warm colors, right? And so they're actually gonna pop off the page um, a little bit more because they're warm, whereas cooler cutter colors tend to recede. And these are muted, so they're gonna tend to recede a little bit too. It's not always about brightness, though it can be, because sometimes a darker color, but that's more vivid could pop out than over a, a light yellow, perhaps. Um, but it's, it's also about warm cool, and um, it's also about contrast. That's what it really comes down to first. So if you have black, like I, I see these colors um, because there's a lot of black in them, but in when um, just treated just the color, these these colors tend to pop out more. All right, how do you convert the colors? Convert the colors from drops. Excellent question. So um, it was really easy for me to do for the Palisade Peach because I had one drop of the 501, one drop of the 704, and one drop of water. And so it was easy to just convert that to a squeeze, right? So I was like, okay, we'll do one squeeze, or we'll do four squeezes of the 501, and one squeeze of the 704, 
and one squeeze of the water. So I just considered just the squeeze, keeping in mind you want your squeezes to be consistent. So don't squeeze really hard on one and then just a little bit on the next one. Make sure that you're doing that consistently. Um, and like I said before, I don't necessarily want to do, unless I wanna make a great big huge batch, which I don't, I don't wanna use 20 squeezes, 10 squeezes, four squeezes, and eight squeezes, I could probably just divide this, you know, by two and then again. So I'll figure out the math there. Just don't want to do that in public. <laughs> Not that great at it. Okay. So does that answer your question about colors uh, from drops to squeezes? What else? I think I may have mentioned this before. If you can, um, when you go to order your refill set, you can get, let's see. Sure have it here. If you're interested in getting the refill big pack, um, I talk about this in the first video. It comes with a great big Navario box. Um, of course, I've got some other things in here right now. And it comes with your three colors that you need to mix. I suggest you buy an extra yellow because you're going to use that color the most. And you get a bunch of empties. I like to use uh, just labels. These are some of the craft um, correction labels that Neuland has. But you'll get some empty bottles. I suggest ordering a couple extra of these um, just in case you mix up a color you don't like and but you don't want to have to wait to wash it or something. You can, you can um, have one fresh right away. And then I suggest um, ordering as many as you can of the markers that you like in empties because as soon as you test them out, you're gonna to wanna to use them right away. And you might find that you wanna use one in a couple of different styles, in a couple of different marker styles. So make sure that you order plenty of those. And again, I suggest testing in a small capacity first and then making your inks because although it's this is a lot of ink to work with, it can go by very, very quickly. In fact, I am literally out of the yellow to the point where I could probably test, but I don't have enough to actually make a color. So there you go. Any other questions? All right, if there's no more questions, thank you everyone for joining me. Again, I will post this video um, on Facebook. So if you check out my Facebook page, Corporate Graffiti Artist, I'll be putting um, more events there that I'll be hosting online and also um, in person. And again, be on the lookout for that PDF that um, I'll have all of these recipes for you, including some ways that I use the colors and um, other tips and tricks. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.